Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Rogers and today we're going to talk about sound delay and how it relates to uh, marching band and drum corps with the metronome placement. A uh, little bit of background on me real quick. I was a drum major in high school for two years at Paltom High School in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and four years in the Blue Devils. So I've always had, I guess, a decent amount of knowledge over sound delay. Um, however, I was in, I guess, Missouri with the Blue Devils teaching a System Blue Leadership Camp this last summer in 2015. And one of the drum majors had asked me a question about sound delay, and I, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit. Um, Harrison Toma had asked me a little bit about metronome placement and kind of where good spots to stand would be and kind of moving around the field and whatnot. So I got to credit Harrison just a bit for giving me the idea to make this video. Uh, for me, with my knowledge and of, of sound delay, I can, you know, I can tell anybody and we can talk about it and whatnot, but I mean, there's only one person I can really talk to at a time. So I figured I would make a video, kind of a blast video for more people to hopefully benefit from this. Uh, if you don't get anything out of it, that's totally fine. If you do, that's good, okay? Um, so with using a bunch of uh, equations, I say a bunch, honestly, it's only pretty much the distance formula. I was able to kind of calculate sound delay and then, you know, when it's good to listen to the Met, when it might not be a good time to listen to the Met. Uh, so right here, let's go ahead and dig deep into it real quick. Um, here is, I guess, a Met placement with the Met at the 35-yard line back hash. By the way, all these Met placements I have are either at the 50 or over on side one. So if it's on side two, it would just be the same thing, just flip-flopped. Um, so what we got here, I've got the metronome placed at the back hash on the 35-yard line. Drum major's up here at just about U26. It's kind of where I have it gridded out. I've um, got our hashes, our yard lines, and everything. And if you haven't figured it out already, each of these little squares, each of these little cells represent a four-step by four-step grid. Okay, And I'll talk about the, the multiplying and scaling in just a little bit. Uh, right here, so once we figure out this distance formula, um, we've got our metronome placed at 35 back hash. We've got our, all these values uh, inside the green anywhere from 0 to 0 0.045 seconds. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And then anything greater than 0.45 seconds is all on the outside over here in red. Okay? Um, 0 0.045 seconds. Let's talk about that for just a second. Okay, I, I went and made a little chart on my flight back from that Missouri system blue camp. Um, made a little chart with time in between beats. Okay, so we've got all these tempos here, 60 all the way to 240, quarter note, eighth note, triplet, 16th note, 32nd note. And all these values in here are the time it takes, or I'm sorry, the time in between each beat. So the time in between a quarter note at 60 beats a minute is one second. Okay, and each of these are in seconds, by the way. Um, and then we just kind of go from there. So here's how I figured that out, just in case you're curious. Um, kind of had a little little thing over here off to the right. I'll go over that in just a second. If you look over here in my cell at, I guess, B3, what I did is I have the number 60 divided by A3. So whatever value is over here in the tempo, it automatically figures out that quarter note or how much time is it between each quarter note. Okay, eighth note, just cut that value in half. Okay, so quarter note divided by two, triplet, cut the quarter note in thirds, sixteenth note, cut the quarter note in fourths, and then thirty-second note, cut the quarter note into eighths. All right, so real quick, I just kind of used 140 beats a minute right here as my first example. Okay, just to kind of give you guys an idea of how I figured out that number. Uh, pretty much 140 beats per one minute, 140 beats a minute. So that's kind of how you write it as a fraction with units, like your elementary school math teachers always taught you to do. Um, what I did, though, is I, I flipped that, took the reciprocal for all you math people, and flipped it. And then what I did is I, um, instead of one minute, I wrote it in 60 seconds because i got to figure out how many seconds is in between each beat because a minute in between each beat, that's going to be pretty, uh, not very applicable to what we're doing. Okay, So I just did 60 divided by 140, and that gave me, once I multi or divided that out or reduced it, gave me 0.42857143 seconds per one beat. Okay, so what I did is I just rounded that to four decimal places, 0.4286, and that's what we've got over here. Okay, so I've got them all set to round to four places, and that's what we've got. 
Uh, one of my buddies, Leo, who marched in the Blue Devils as well, asked me, is there a way to throw in, you know, more common tempos like 132, 144? The answer is absolutely yes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a link with all of these files. Um, I'll figure out some way to do that so that way you guys, anybody can have these, use them, download them, whatever. Um, but a way to put in, I guess, an exact tempo that you want. So say I'm going to put in 132, so I'm going to insert a row above. And then I'm just going to punch in 132, hit enter, and it takes it and does all the same exact formulas for that. Okay, so you got 0.4545 seconds in between each quarter note at 132 beats per minute. Okay, so that's just the way you can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that so I keep in, keep in line with my tens here. Uh, but there's, there's that explanation. Okay, so right over here, back to that one example that I had, the metronome at the 35 back hash. Why I chose 0 0.045 is the breaking point is because if we look back at our chart 0 0.045, that's about a, six, a 30 second note around 160, I don't know, 165 ish or so. Okay, um, I know the battery plays a lot of notes, they play really, really fast, and so that was kind of my breaking point right there. Um, I know. You know, batteries play a lot faster, 200 beats a minute, whatever. I don't, I'm, I'm a trumpet player and drum major, so I don't know exactly, you know, the time in between each of those beats, but I know it's not very big. Okay, so there's kind of that breaking point right there. So let's go back to that one met at the back 35, uh, or 35 back hash. Um, so here's what that looks like. Okay, just a little blob, I guess, of sound. I'm going to go to the 50, um, and actually let's go to the 50 back sideline over here. Okay, 50 back sideline. Uh, with the Met, here's you know all of the people, or I guess all the places on the field where the metronome sound delay is, I guess, less than 0 0.045 seconds. Okay, so back to the distance formula, what I was talking about before. Um, distance formula, let's pull that up real quick. Okay, distance formula. All it is is pretty much the Pythagorean theorem here. Okay, trying to find the distance between these two points. So it takes the differences in the uh, the y values per se. If you're talking about a, a graph, x values over here on the x-axis and y values. Um, and so that's what it does. So we've got the difference in the y values and then the difference in the x values. Add those squares up and then take the square root of it. And then you've got your hypotenuse if you're thinking in terms of right triangles or just that distance right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take that over here. So what I did is I, I picked a formula from one of these cells, so metronome at the back 50 sideline, 50 back sideline, and I selected cell Z8 right there, Z8. Okay, so there's that cell that I selected. So this is kind of what we're looking at over here on this other page. Oh no, I closed it out. There we go. All right. So there's that formula for cell Z8, and I took a little screenshot over here so you guys could kind of see what's going on. Distance formula. Pretty much all I did with this distance formula is I added up the distance from the metronome to that marcher there at cell Z8, added the distance from that marcher in Z8 all the way down to the drum major, and then what I did is I subtracted the distance from the metronome straight ahead to the drum major. Okay. So what that does is it takes the distance from metronome to marcher, from the marcher to the drum major, and then subtracts the straight ahead distance. So what I'm aiming to do is figure out the, I guess, the, the amount of time more it takes to go from met to marcher to drum major as opposed to straight ahead. Okay, So all those numbers in these cells are met to marcher plus marcher to drum major minus met to drum major. Okay, so I wanted to find a number for that. So here's the, all these formulas or this distance formula three times here. Forget about this multiplier. I'll go over that in a second. Um, so we got the square root of the sum of the squares of these columns. Okay, so it gets you the columns. So that's your left to right. Okay, and then minus one. I'll go over that minus one in a second. And then the sum of the squares of the rows. Okay, so we got our rows right here. The reason it's minus one is because if you take these columns right here, we've got one column, two column, three column, four column, five column, six column, seven columns right here, but we're subtracting one because we're going from the middle of that cell to the middle of this cell. OK, 
Okay, so subtracting one because of that. Uh, same thing if you think about counting up years, 2000, the year 2000 to year 2005. Um, yeah, technically five years have elapsed, but if you count all of the years in there, you got the year 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, and that's technically six years, so it depends on how you count it. I'm wanting to go from the middle of the cell to the middle of the cell, so that's why I've got the minus one on there. Okay, so here is the distance formula from Met to Marcher, adding the distance formula from Marcher to Drum Major up front, and then subtracting the straight ahead distance right here, which is from Met all the way down to the Drum Major. Okay, uh, so I got some kind of number in there, but all of these units are measured by one. So what I had to do is, since each of these units are measured by one, but I need them to be measured in four and a half steps, um, or I'm sorry, four steps, what I did is four steps is exactly seven and a half feet. Okay, so I decided, hey, we're gonna have seven and a half feet per cell, and then the speed of sound, depending on the temperature, I'm gonna say it's roughly about 1,150 feet per second. In Texas, it's kinda hot, so that's about at, I wanna say 90 degrees or so, something like that. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got our formula and kind of how I figured out that little multiplier. Sorry, I gotta slide this guy over so that little division bar lines back up. Okay, so 7.5 feet per cell, so I had to multiply by 7.5, but then I had to divide off that 1,150 feet per second. Feet cancel out, so we get 0 .00652 blah 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 seconds per cell. The reason I didn't round that at all is because I wanted it to be as exact as it possibly could. Okay, so whatever number I ended up with at the end after you add up Met to Marcher plus Marcher to Drum Major and then minus the distance from Met to Drum Major, then you multiply it by that multiplier right there and then you get the exact time in seconds uh, longer than it is from Met to Marcher back to Drum Major. Okay, uh, so there's that information. Sorry, that's super hardcore mathy explanation. Uh, but what I've got in this, uh, in this file right here, I'm about 80% complete to what I'd like to be. Honestly, I'd like to have like a computer program to where you could, you know, click on any cell right here and that places the metronome right there and then it automatically calculates the green blob and then all the red from there. So I haven't figured that out yet. Um, so what I did in this file is I just kind of placed the MET in different spots and then ran the formula, copied and pasted all of the cells after that. So we got the MET at the back 50, back sideline on the 50 yard line. We got the MET at the 35 back sideline. Then we got the MET at the 20 yard line, back sideline. And then the MET at the five back sideline. And then I wanted to go ahead and see what it looked like coming up to the back hash. So I've got the same yard line. So 50 back hash, 35 back hash, 20 back hash, and then lastly at the five yard line back hash. Okay, um, one of the things that I, I realized is that there's a little bit of uh, room in the back as well to listen to the Met. So if you got the Met, you know, within I'd say about 12 steps in front of you, then honestly you could listen to it with almost negligible sound delay right there. Okay, that also made me realize too if this uh, this value right here, let's go ahead and figure out what that value is. Point 0375 seconds. Um, so if we're talking in terms of you know time in between a beat, 0 0.0375, that's a 30 second note at 200 beats a minute. Okay. Uh, what that made me realize is I know battery has a ton of um, ton of quick beats, ton of fast beats, not a lot of time in between each beat. So that made me have a newfound respect for the battery. I mean, I've always respected drummers and everything like that. And I think awesome, awesome people. But 0 0.0375 seconds, that's a 30 second note at 200 beats a minute. If they're playing some quick notes, they honestly can't really, you know, it's, it's really, really hard to listen back or listen to the front. So if the tempo source, maybe the center snare is up here and the bases are back here by 12 steps, you know, it's kind of having to change listening responsibilities and listen back to the bases or something. Okay. Um, another thing, last thing, hopefully that I found and I'll, I'll shut up and end this video is one of the things that I realized is I thought that the sound delay was going to be more of like a cone coming from the tempo source to the front more of like a cone or a triangle but what I found out is it's more of like an ellipse I know it's hard to tell here but let's see if I can go to the 50 and make it make a little bit more sense 
Okay, if we've got some green blobs back here on the back sideline or behind the back sideline um, connecting up over here, and then same thing over here going down over to the drum major and behind the drum major. Um, it makes a little bit more sense now, and all you mathy people might understand. If you look up the definition of an ellipse, if we've got two focal points right here, the metronome and the drum major, two fixed points that stay there all the time, and then all of these variables with, I guess, the distance less than 0 0.045, and you make an ellipse out of that, okay? Uh, I'm not going to explain that very well right now, and I'm not going to go too much into detail, but if you look up the definition of an ellipse, it might make a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's what I found. There's all the information. So once again, I'm going to find a way to make these files accessible to people. I know this is a Mac, so it's in Numbers. It's in the Numbers program, which is pretty much Mac's version of Excel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to format it to Excel as well. So then I'll, I'll find a way in the link or in the description below to, I guess, have these files accessible or find some way that you guys can download them, use them, abuse them, whatever. If you don't find a use for it, that's totally fine. If you do, good. I'm glad I helped out in some way. Um, once again, I kind of stated before too that I'm about 80% complete with this. I was wanting, you know, a computer program where I could just click anywhere on the on the field and then it calculate from there so if there are any computer programmers out there that can find a way to do that or kind of have some insight that'd be awesome I am like a super novice at that have no idea and honestly I had to google a lot to figure this stuff out um, but anyways I'll throw my email down in the description so that way um, you guys can contact me if you have any insight for that or any help or any guidance that would be awesome um, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, I know it's a, a good like woodworking channel. I kind of build some stuff, make some stuff, but it's kind of where I'm, you know, inputting or uploading any videos that I've got, I guess, marching band related, drum corps related, or building related. So thanks a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one and use it, abuse it, download it, whatever you need to do.